Let's have a now a look how multidimensional arrays are stored and we start looking again about one dimensional arrays. So first of all let's assume we have x to be an array of two integers. So we defined here size 1 to be 2 and you could think about it to be a row that contains two columns with, so we have two values. Okay, So we have one row storing two columns and we can iterate over it you know going over each element of this individual row step by step so now let's have a look how we store two-dimensional arrays well if you want to have three rows you would have in front of the number of columns another bracket notation number of elements that you want to use. So here we have now an array that contains three rows with two columns each. So basically representing this structure in memory. And how would we iterate over it? Well we have to now use two loops, one over the rows, right, row zero, row one, two, two, and one over the columns. And then we could for example initialize those values to be zero. So how do we actually iterate over it? Well, that depends on the loop order that we're doing. Here in this case we go over the rows first, so it means we go over row 0 first and then we go over all the columns, right? So we go over column 0, column 1 and then once this is done we have to go back to the outer loop and we go over the next row. So we would go row 0 like this, then row 1 and row 2. And so what we're basically printing is the values for x0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, and 2, 1. Right, but it's up to us. If we would have swapped the four loops, well, we would have gotten basically a mapping where we go over the columns first, like this, and then, you know, for all the rows, and then we go over column 1 for all the rows. So it's up to us how we structure our program. So how is this data structure stored in main memory? Well, the compiler does know the size and of those data structures. So when we declare our array to be three rows and two columns, the compiler needs to knows basically, okay, we have to store six elements. And so it would store them by serializing the, the last element first. So in this case, we would store basically column 0 and column 1 of the first row, then in the second row we store element 0 and 1 and so on. So that's how it is stored in main memory. And it's also important because it is a performance issue if you try to access data randomly of such an array, uh, it's not so efficient than if you would access it exactly as in the order as it is stored, like here in the memory. Okay. So we can say the rightmost index changes more quickly or should change more quickly and the leftmost index should change more slowly and that's then a good access pattern exactly as we've done it here, yeah, which is efficient and we basically followed exactly the order as if data is stored in memory. Good. So, what have we in here? So, you could write it is slightly different. So, here we say we have two, basically two columns, and we let the compiler decide how many rows we would need. So, it would then rearrange this data, the six data points here that I've given, the six integer values. It basically rearranged them as follows 1, 6, 3, 7, and 2, and a 0 and 2, like this, into this 2D structure. Right? And it's basically the same layout as if you would use a one dimensional array of six elements. Right? So you can use size 1 times size 2, so six elements, and store it in a 1D array. And it's really syntactic sugar for you to have multi dimensional arrays because the compiler does under the hood all this kind of organization 
for you. However, there's a difference when we use 2D arrays with pointers. So here what we have, instead of our 2D array in memory, what I wanted to create is, I wanted to create an array of three pointers to integers. So basically it's also a 2D data structure. Yeah. And what I do here is I create in memory value one, two, and three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. And I cast them to be an, of type integer three, which means an array of three elements. And so they are somewhere stored now in memory and I can assign this memory location to our pointer array. So the pointer array at first row basically shall point to these three values. So that's what we see here on the right side. Okay, so we have now our 2D, our additional array point, array, and it point, the first element points to this array, the second element points to this array, the third element points to this array. Okay, so now we have to store additionally those three uh, pointers, but the element, accessing the elements is the same, right? So I can access the first row by saying A of zero, which differences this, differences this pointer, so I get the address of this array. Okay, but the storage layout is totally different, I think you would see, compared to this one where everything looks like this in memory. Okay, so like I said, there's sometimes this confusion and you surely have to practice this a bit to not get confused. So let's have a look how quickly how the casting actually works. So when I create here an array of five pointers to integers, that's somewhere in memory, like this one here with three elements, I have just three memory addresses um, which store the pointers, right? So there is nothing yet done. But once I do this assignment, um, the compiler in this case knows that A is an array of five pointers and this kind of cast that we're doing creates an array with three integers somewhere in memory. And this array is also a pointer and so we assign this pointer then to be assigned to our array of pointers in the first position. Okay, 